Hello, you are watching a new episode of In Focus in Dubai. Today we have a new Muslim in the studio because, in fact, as you know, there is a surprising statement for a lot of people. Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth. Therefore, from time to time, we have a new Muslim in our studios, and today we have Mr. Craig Harper. I believe Islamic name is Amin. Most welcome. I'm really happy to have you here. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure, actually. We'll usually start with the beginning of a story that is, can you tell us something about your childhood background and how your life started, basically? Of course. No problem. Um, basically, I was born in the UK. I was born in a place called Portsmouth. Um, we moved to the Middle East when I was age of three. Um, and I spent my childhood growing up here in the Middle East, around the Gulf, um, Bahrain and Doha, and here in Dubai, of course. Um, then I went, uh, I returned back to the UK when I was nine for my um, education and I was brought up there. But all through my childhood I still refer to Dubai and to the Middle East as my home. Um, it's the kind of place where I grew up and all my childhood memories are here. Um, people always ask me back at home, what's it like to live in the Middle East? <laughs> and it was a case of all I can always remember is like the, the call to prayer because I was always brought up with that in the background all the time. Um, and then I came back out here two years ago. Um, and my father still lives here, my brother lives here as well. I came back out here two years ago and I decided to uh, start my own company here. So that's, what, uh, that's how I ended up back here in the Middle East. Right. Well, it seems that it's basically second home here for you. Uh, well, I think it's probably more my first home than my <laughs> second, actually. All right, so <laughs> yeah. you really feel at ease. Yeah, very much so. It's very, very. It's a nice place to live. People are very friendly. It's very safe as well compared to Europe. Definitely. Yeah. So. I mean, could you tell us how your journey started towards Islam? Um, it was uh, just by asking people questions, you know. I think as part of... Um, getting to know people's cultures um, if you're going to interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis you need to understand the most important parts of their lives um, to me I think religion especially here is very big part compared to Europe where, very true. where um, religion seems to have been put on a, on a back burner so to speak um, so I thought I, I needed to find out more about the religion so that I could understand how people think and how I could communicate better um, and just by doing so, I found so much, you know, so much interest in Islam as a as a religion. And it was when I met my my very good good friends now, who were from Pakistan originally, um, and we were just talking about questions. I was asking them questions. Uh, different people came back with some sometimes different answers, but on overall, the answers I got back were very very good. Uh, this is when I was asking my friends and I was hassling them every week to sort of say, Let, you know, I want to know more. Can we go down to the open mosque? And one week came and we missed the first day and then the next week came we missed that. And eventually that's where I came to the open mosque and I found out more information. And without that sort of being there, there'd be no, no way for me to be able to sort of find my inroads into Islam. Because here it seems very closed. Yeah, the, right. the doors seem very closed. When you talk about the open mosque, you refer to the Jumeirah Mosque Absolutely. for this visit for non-Muslims. Actually, we were there with the, in focus. We had uh, three programs out of one uh, mosque visit. So just for the viewers, if they've been watching previously, they, they would know that you refer to that. I think it's so important to open the door to non-Muslims and to let them interact with us. Absolutely. It's just so very wrong to, you know, just uh, basically shut yourself and in a bubble and not communicate with non-Muslims and not provide them with information, especially when they are asking for. Well, no, absolutely. And it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, <laughs> it's, whether the selfish is a strong word to use or not, but it's quite selfish to sort of keep keep this to people, keep this to yourself just because you were born a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be able to open the doors and let people in to sort of see what it's all about and try and encourage the faith because it's 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 fabulous. You know, Actually, it's, it's a duty to do so, and I believe that when you think you have something beautiful, you should try to share it with others and make others happy with it. Absolutely. You know, I'd like to talk about your company. You just mentioned before that you have. Uh, your own business here. Would mm -hmm. you like to tell us something about it? Yeah, I can tell you. Um, there is. Uh, I actually have uh, formed 
to um, another company recently, so that I actually work, work for two companies. Okay. Spread my time. <laughs> um, one is a, a company called Regency, which is um, an IT-based company. We provide Linux-based solutions, okay. which, believe it or not, are all free of charge. <laughs> um, so there's a there's an interesting business point of view. Um, the second company which we just started, which is between myself and my two close friends who, who sort of introduced me to Islam, we've set up a, a, a second company, which is a marketing consultancy firm, 3H Solutions. So uh, that's going very well, I'm sure. I'm very happy for you, and I, I hope you'll be more and more successful. Apparently it seems that you surf a lot on the internet. <laughs> Absolutely. Quite related to. As part of as part of my um, as part of my background, I need to do an awful lot of research on the mm -hmm. internet, and that was one of the things I came across when I was, uh, well, I still am, continuously searching. searching. Mm -hmm. uh, as I tried to explain to my friend Mohammed, he was. Uh, people when they're born Muslim, they they are brought up with this all the, all their life. Where I've just sort of um, I'm having to learn everything they've learned in in their childhood in a very short time. So the internet becomes a very important part of looking for research and finding information. Were you satisfied? To be honest, no, I wasn't. Um, a lot of the information uh, on a lot of sites seemed kind of far-fetched. Um, there was one in particular that I came across where uh, they were talking about a certain um, passage in the Quran um, saying about how um, the Quran talks about the, the fetus when we are when we are born. <laughs> yes. Um, saying that we resemble um, a leech, and <laughs> they went one one step further and sort of said that we look like a piece of chewing gum after <laughs> being chewed for so many minutes. But there is a verse that says a chew uh, a chewable substance. substance. But when you see, actually, I, I was on their website and I, <laughs> I saw the picture, and I, I found it myself very weird too. It's just you know it didn't resemble anything. <laughs> like how they were trying to. So, you know, there's, there's lots of things where I think people need to be very careful because anybody can actually create a website. Yes. It doesn't take any expertise whatsoever. I'm glad you say you can buy You can buy a domain name for very little money, um, 35 pounds sterling, equivalent of 60, 70 dirhams or so here. Almost nothing. Almost nothing. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, so, anybody can create a website as well. It's, it's, there's all sorts of tools, even in uh, your standard word package that you would use on your normal desktop. Yes. You can export that as a HTML page and post it up. So it doesn't take uh, a lot of expertise. So basically what I'm saying is people need to be very careful of what they find on the internet. Definitely. And take it on face value. And yeah. Don't read too much into it. I mean there are so many of these websites available. Myself, I. I was trying to see the five most uh, visited websites mm -hmm. and I was just so disappointed with information I found. It's not that I'm a scholar, far from that. But I always made sure, and especially in the first year when I became a Muslim, which is about 16 years ago I, I became a Muslim, the very first year I was really struggling with, you see, as you said before, people saying different things, different information, and you feel kind of lost. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the information is not just parallel, it's just, you know, it's just like a huge contradiction. Well, I, th I think I think there's a lot of um, between Islam and culture. I think a lot of things have actually um, sort of the focus has sort of been lost. I think in some areas, um, from what I, from what I've been information I've been getting back from different people, there seems to be. Um, the, 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 there's, there's a word I'm looking for. The the boundaries, the borders between culture and what is Islamic mm -hmm. seems to have sort of got merged together and smudged in, in people's focus. So I, th I think there's, there needs to be some clarification between what is culturally um, a rule or a suggestion or how to, how to act and which is Islamic. No, I think there seems to be a, a lot of... You're so right. Yeah. You're so right. I'm glad you, you pointed out this because a lot of people would take internet as the very safe reference and just by reminding us how easy it is to have a, for anyone a personal website, people should be more careful and not just take for granted any information Absolutely. they see on the no. internet. 
you should go out there and search and just don't read one site and sort of say is Definitely. this right you, you've got to do some more research into things and actually look into things a lot deeper than what they would seem after seeking information and getting to know more and more why finally you you embrace Islam why is it Islam that you chose and not another religion okay um, my my parents basically they uh, as I was brought up they didn't give me any religious sort of guidance mm -hmm. I, they didn't point me in a, in a religious uh, any religious focus both both my parents were very busy with their normal life day-to-day -day life and didn't have much time for religion um, since then my mum has become a born-again Christian in the UK okay. um, and she tried to encourage people and things but a lot of the information that I was given by my mother when she was she became a born-again Christian there seems to be so much um, contradiction between um, different areas and I was talking to uh, a gentleman because of course the, the Bible was originally written in Hebrew um, and like Arabic Hebrew is a very dis descriptive language um, and there's a lot of things that change when you convert something that's written in Hebrew or Arabic into English it loses so much feeling and so much, so much description that uh, the Bible, I think, is. It, it, I just couldn't. I just couldn't grasp it as a as an idea, as a as a. From religion. a very young age, basically, you were not convinced. You did not take it as a reference. No, no, not whatsoever. I've all, I've always I've all, always been brought up with no religion, really. Um, it was only when I was at school with my uh, teacher that actually made me start to think, because I was always brought up with the education that uh, the theory of evolution was the, oh, the way it all yeah. goes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my, a very wise teacher, now I look at it, it's very wise indeed, um, she, she told me that um, no matter what you believe in at this point in time in your life, if you believe in the evolution, then think back to the, the clouds of gas and whatever and the, the big beginning. explosion, the mm. beginning. But if you believe in all that, who put it there in the first place? Or what put it there in the first place? There was a beginning. It had to become from somewhere. Mm. So she made me to she started me thinking that really there must be a God because you know you can't start from nothing something has to put it there in the first place so that's where it got me got me started um, so I was always very very pleased with that sort of uh, from that day onwards I've always sort of looked at um, so this is the first step for you as a, a regular human without any religion because yeah that was my first my first that was the first thought that was put into my head that really told me that there, there is must a be creator a God, there must be a creator and then going to Islam what was the big thing that you found so maybe more logical or more attractive it was the fact that um, as I said the, the Bible had been changed so many times from mm -hmm. from the, its original um, grounding to what it is today it seems to, it has to have changed because it's been taught in English or it's, it's in not Latin been revealed it's, in, it's in, been yeah, yeah. absolutely and the main thing which really impressed me was with Islam was the fact that it's still in Arabic 1400 plus years later it's still in Arabic and it's still taught in Arabic now I thought it was very strange at first as a concept because my friends who from um, in Asia, they don't speak Arabic as a language, but they still go, they still learn the Quran in Arabic. Yes. And I thought, well, okay, so you don't understand what you're talking about, <laughs> but yet you're still, you're still learning something in a foreign language. Because it was originally revealed as such, and as you said before, translations would just alterate or change, and you know, it's just so much more important to keep it preserved as Absolutely. in its originality. It's just, you know, it's just the fact that it's still God's word even after all this time has passed and so many people have read it and it's been reprinted however many millions and millions of times it's still in the same form it was put together so the authentical message absolutely, was there absolutely. actually it's just a little difference from oh, talking about information before um, what I know is that uh, the original um, Bible or the old it's true that the book revealed to Moses we believe it was in Hebrew but from my information the book revealed to Prophet Jesus was in Syriaki, which is a language that is spoken in some part of uh, Iraq, but it's, it's very little, uh, I mean it's not spread anymore, it's almost lost. It has mm. nothing to do with Syria though. 
This mm -hmm. just might be a new information for okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. What I want to ask you is actually the reaction of the people, because we talk about information, embracing Islam, and finally, when you start informing people around you, what were the reaction of, you know, friends, surroundings, colleagues? How did you feel about telling others that you are a Muslim? Well, the first, first people I told them were my very close friends, and they were over, overjoyed with, the, with my, my life-changing decision, um, so to speak. Um, so that gave me a lot of confidence straight away. Um, all my friends accepted it extremely well. They all thought it was great. In fact, I haven't stopped answering questions since I became Muslim. They're all very <laughs> interested, and I got friends that say, "Can we, you know, c can you go to me with me to the open mosque and things?" I said, "Yeah, no problem. Let's go." Um, so you'll probably be seeing me there again. <laughs> Most welcome. Um, but no, everybody, everybody who I've spoken to has been more curious rather than um, on on the defensive, so to speak. Uh, they've been more curious about you know why and what was my reasons and just really really interested in Islam as a as a as a religion yeah because I actually I I believe especially from the Western side maybe because of the media the a part of the wrong image that is spread there some people are surprised to hear that you know so many people are embracing Islam and even Westerners because it seemed to be such a different culture and and it's probably why it's so important to keep on talking to people when we embrace Islam and explain the reasons of our change. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's... Um, I think the media themselves portray um, Islam in, a, in a quite a, a bad light. But then, if, we were, if Islam as a whole was more open and was um, brought, brought itself to the limelight, um, rather than in the negative context that it is at the moment in the media. I think, you know, people need to open their doors a lot more and let Very people true. into into the religion and show them what it's all about. Very true. Um, and I think it would be, people would be able to understand that Islam is a very sort of peaceful religion and that people are, are there purely to, to follow, follow, follow the word, follow the, the, the scriptures that are written in the, in the Quran. And I think it's I think it's very very important we should share that with people. Well, what are your feelings when you look at the, the Muslim society? Do you think they really portray the right image? Do you think they they don't just feed stereotypes somehow? What what would you like to tell them? Those Muslims all around the world they're just about twenty percent of Arabs, so we're not talking here about Arabs. Eighty percent of the Islamic uh, community is actually non-Arab and I just remind this from time to time because I think little people are aware of that. Mm. What, what are your spontaneous feelings when you look at the different Islamic societies? Well the, 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 main, the main focus that people seem to look at for Islam is in, in the Middle East, in the, sort of the Arabian world. They yeah. don't seem to talk about that Asia or the Philippines have quite a large sort of Muslim community. Very large. Um, you've also got, of course, you've got Pakistan, um, you've got in India, there's still a huge um, number of Muslims in India, especially in the northern parts. But what seems to happen is the actual focus is on the, the areas of where there isn't that great, that, there isn't that much wealth within the people. Okay. So that means they don't get the education that people should have, like people here in the UA are very lucky. There's a, money isn't just in the high ranks of people. It's spread amongst the population. There's yes. a very even distribution of, of wealth here. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at places like Iraq and Iran and um, all the different places where we've been having troubles lately, but um, it seems to be that the, the top people have the wealth, but the everyday man doesn't. And if they don't have money, they don't get education. Yeah. Okay. And without education, how can you how can you go out and look for information? It's so true. Okay. I think really we need to start looking at home and start looking after the people who are who are poorer in our societies. Um, by giving them the education, you're giving them the basic tools to actually understand information and work out the rights and wrongs of that information rather than just taking somebody's word for it because they are in a power of position because they've got lots of money. And that seems to be what happens. And I think it's always been like that in the history when you see people or communities oppressed not having enough or at least 
for the vital needs. They become aggressive. They, they start being uh, very weak, and you can kind of brainwash them. Any leader, any dictator can just come up with a, a crazy idea, and unfortunately, some people will follow that person. There's a lack of education, and, and, and this is, of course, related to the, the level of life they, they have. Absolutely. And I think this is an important point. I think we need to start with education. I think everything else will, will follow. You know, I think it's uh, a major, major point is education. Very good. Now, we've been talking a little about media, but I'd like to go back to it. And I want to know, what is your, your candid opinion on the media, let's say the British or the Western? or You know, you have both sides of the story now because you've been living here, you've been living there, mm -hmm. and you probably realize that, in, I mean, the news may be more or less the same, but the story very often does not okay. quite sound the same. I think in, in any form of media, whether it's print media or whether it's uh, television media, or even radio media, mm -hmm. they will they will always say what brings them in, um, whatever brings them in money. Basically, if it, if they want to see somebody being shot, they will show it. If it brings in ratings, okay. Yes, you're so right. So, I don't think really listening to the media is it ever is ever a good 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 way to get information because it's always a biased point of view. It's their biased point of view, depending on what they want to get at the time. So okay. you feel there is a manipulation somehow. Oh. <laughs> Wherever there's money, there's manipulation. <laughs> they, they, will, they, they survive on ratings, basically. Yeah. So whatever they get to increase their ratings, whether that's um, Kylie Minogue on the front cover of the paper <laughs> at that point in time, whoever, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever is in the limelight, that's what they will, they will discuss and, they will, and they will use it to their advantage. So I think really you should always take media of any sort with a little bit of a, a pinch of salt, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and take it in the, the light that it's, it's just information. Again, you, from that information, then you should do some research off your own back, whether you can use the internet, of course, be kept very careful. But speaking to other people is the best way. But don't take one person's advice. Go out there and ask lots of people about the same question and take the, take the average. Very true. Very true. Very good advice, actually. Now, what about your family? You may have informed them, maybe not, but did you ever speak about Islam to them? Um, well, recently I've been talking to them a little bit more about it. Um, mainly my, um, the younger members of the family, of the, of the younger members of the family, they seem to, um, we've been talking just, just in passing that I've been going for Islamic lessons and things and I've been learning a lot more about Islam and they've been asking questions about what's involved, why, how do you become a Muslim? They're not really rejecting. The no, not whatsoever. Everybody who I've spoken to. They're kind of neutral and, and still. Yeah, uh, everybody I've spoken to just have just been interested rather than. I've never, I haven't had any negative sort of uh, feedback from anybody yet, which is, is very good. So you feel good about going back to UK and saying to people, uh, I am Do a Muslim. Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> you prefer to stay here. You may go on holiday. Um, if I have to, yes. No, I've got no problems with that whatsoever. I, it'll be. Um, Quite interesting, really, because when I was living there, I didn't even think about mosques and where mosques are and things like that. So it would be nice to go back and search out where all the mosques are, especially where I was sort of living at the time when I came back. And start getting, maybe trying to get in touch with some uh, Muslim uh, communities then? Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, I haven't got any intentions of going back to the UK for some time. But uh, I'm sure when I do, I'll be maybe searching. Maybe soon. Very absolutely. good. Now, as a conclusion, because uh, slowly but surely we're reaching the end of the program, it's um, something I very often ask new Muslims, because we hear that they've embraced Islam, they did this, and you know the information came from different sources and so on. But if there is probably a few feelings you carry inside since you became a Muslim, if you had to choose one of uh, the attributes or the, the most precious feeling Islam has brought into your life, what would it be? What would, what would you like to tell people? Well, um, one of the things that just by um, becoming a Muslim, I've learnt um, a lot more about the community that I live in. Um, it's brought down so many more barriers just by just by becoming becoming a Muslim. It's, it's it's helped me understand the community that I live in as well. Okay. Um, as well as 
um, it's just helped me help me become closer and understand what people go through on a day-to-day -day basis and the reasons why they do it and for me it's been it's been um, eye-opening just to be able to interact with people on a on a so much more of a on the same level really um, and the one thing that I found was amazing was the first time when I went to the mosque <laughs> that um, my first experience in the mosque was was uplifting you know I felt um, just by going there, there seemed to nobody even looked at me twice, and I thought the first thing would happen is everybody sort of turn around and say, blue -eyed boy. "Who's this Westerner?" <laughs> in, you know, he, you know, this blue-eyed boy stood here, but it's not. It wasn't the case, and I found that people were always all on the same level. It didn't matter whether you were um, a VIP, you know, someone with bags and bags of money, yeah. or whether you were the, the road sweeper or taxi driver. It didn't make any difference. Everybody was the same. And, you know, even if you go into churches in, in Europe, you know, whenever they get somebody who's very important, they get pushed to the front or wherever, you know, and that didn't happen. I thought that was that was very, very uh, uh, amazing feeling. A feeling of community. A feeling of community, a feeling that we're all the same. As, you know, if we do, if, if, I, if I cut myself, I bleed just like anybody else. My blood is no <laughs> different in color. Um, that's a good statement. You know, and it's it's that's that's what I found was amazing. It's the fact that in in Islam people are the same. We're all the same. We're all um, racism you know. is a rotten issue, as we know. Absolutely, yeah. and it shouldn't be. You know, I I have no problems where I live in the middle of Satwa. I have people from all over the world, and I I'm very good friends with all of them, and I hope that they they like me as a person as well. So you know, it's we get on very very well. That's great. Thank you so much. Really, it was lovely having you here, and um, I believe that people are always interested to hear a new story of someone embracing Islam, which is did. Hopefully, it will uh, let some people understand a little more about why is it such an attraction, and mm -hmm. for a lot of Westerners, actually, it seems that it has done a lot of good to you. It's us very much. So. Thank you so much. I mean, maybe we'll have you on another show. I hope. Talking so. about websites, for <laughs> instance. <laughs> I'd look forward to it. Thank you. Salam alaikum. And thank you to all of you for watching us. We're expecting you to be with us next week in Focus here in Dubai. Bye bye.